If you have your Bibles, I invite you to open with me to the New Testament book of 1 Peter. How many of you thought we were going to turn back to Genesis tonight? <laughs> well, we're in 1 Peter chapter, number t- uh, chapter 3 this evening. And of course, we spent some time this morning uh, really emphasizing God's commands for husbands. Um, And I I pray that God would truly help us men be the husbands uh, the Lord desires us to be, and the the husbands and fathers our families need for us to be. And certainly, you know, uh, and we're going to look at something tonight in, in a few moments that will help us. And I pray it'll help us. You know, because as we look around, you know, our homes and, and even take stock of our own hearts and lives, we are confronted with, uh, with the failures that we've, that we've committed, right? And all the, all the things we've done wrong. And not to discourage anyone, but you can't do it. You cannot do it on your own. There is no way that you can live the Christian life without Christ. There is no way that that our homes can be Christian homes without Christ. And I pray that God would help us this evening. And tonight as we look here in 1 Peter, uh, we find the example of our Lord. And that's the example that we're going to draw from this evening as as we look here and and uh, see what God's desire is for, for wives and for, and, and for mothers. Now, I can be a little bit more pointed with men because I am one, right? And, uh, but I pray that God would help us tonight, all, all kidding aside, uh, to truly see the need that we have in this hour. Uh, certainly our homes are under attack. Uh, everything is, is upside down. Society is, has turned the home around, turned it upside down, and we need to have a revolution back to the Word of God and understand uh, what the Lord has is, is called us to be and called us to do. And so if you're able tonight, I invite you to stand with me. Uh, we're going to read just one verse. Well, that's, let's read four verses by way of introduction tonight. Now, they're not long verses. Uh, we'll begin in, in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 1, and we'll read down through verse number 4. Notice and follow along with me, in beginning again in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. The Bible says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that of outward adorning, of plaiting of the hair, and of wearing of gold, and of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornate, uh, I'm sorry, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Heavenly Father, we thank You for the Word tonight. And Lord, again, As we always pray, Lord, may we not just pray these things flippantly without any care, just out of habit, but Lord, may we truly be seeking You tonight for the help that we need from Your Word. Lord, may You please open our eyes that we may behold marvelous things from Your law. Lord, that You would teach us great and mighty things. Lord, that You would help us understand what it takes, uh, maybe lack of better term, but, but Lord, what it takes to win in our homes. Lord, we certainly want, don't want to lose. And Lord, we pray that you would give, give great insight tonight. Lord, that you'd help me. Lord, there's so much that the Word of God says here and even in these verses, let alone other places in the Word of God concerning uh, this, uh, this important position in the home. So God, help us be, help us be yielded to you. Lord, may we say only the things that You'd have us say. Lord, may we all receive help tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. If you're in the habit of marking things in your Bibles, I'd like to draw your attention to what the Word of God says in verse number 1 of 1 Peter chapter 3. 
The Bible says, likewise, ye wives. Likewise, ye wives. Now, the word likewise is, is a reference to what Jesus had done for us. In chapter 2 of 1 Peter, we find the description of our Lord and what He accomplished for us in how uh, He submitted Himself to the authority of God. Notice what the Word of God says. And uh, let's look here in verse number 20. It's of, of Second Peter, I'm sorry, First Peter chapter two, verse number twenty says, For what glory is it if when ye are buffeted for your faults ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us. So the Bible is referencing Christ who suffered for us. How did he suffer? And won't you won't you mark a, a statement here? Uh, for uh, leaving us an example. Won't you mark that word, that example? Leaving us an example. That ye should follow in His steps. So as we consider our homes, our desire is that they would be a great picture of Christ. Which, which it is. Whether you realize it or not, your home is a picture of Jesus Christ. Now, have you ever had... Now, my wife and I we were talking about this the other day about family pictures. Have you ever had a family portrait done? And, you know, our kids were young, and, and it, inevitably there's always one of the jokers, you know, right in the front, making some weird face. You know, or, you know, cross-eyed, you know, looking away from the camera. Or me, I, I mean, I cannot take a picture. I always close my eyes or I blink or something. My wife says, why do you do this? I don't know. If I knew why, I would, I would keep them open. You know, but you know, there's, it's a picture of our family. It might not be a very good picture of our family, but it's a picture of our family nonetheless. Now, our homes are pictures of Christ. It might not be a very good picture of Christ, but it's a picture of Christ nonetheless. But we look here and we find the example that Jesus Christ has left for us. And if we will do as the Word of God instructs, our homes will be a great picture uh, of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so He left us an example uh, that we should follow in his, his steps. Notice in verse 22 of 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, "...who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself..." To him that judgeth righteously. Would you mark that statement there in, in chapter 2 and verse number 23? Uh, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who is he talking about? He's talking about God the Father. He submitted himself to the authority of God the Father. It says, who his own self bear our sins, verse 24 who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Friends, the Lord Jesus Christ is our example. And tonight as we look here and address the position of wives and mothers in our, in, in our homes, there's no greater example to follow than the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what a great picture, what an encouragement it is for the Christian wife to be able to look to Christ for the example that, that we need. And so many men and women have the idea, however, considering our home or concerning our home, that uh, everything is a battle. That's not the case. It ought not be the case. Uh, this is not what God intended for marriage. It's not a battle. It's not who can win the argument. It's not who can get that last word. It's not about knowing, uh, you know, I always know where my wife stands. Because she... And I'm thankful for that. She doesn't tell me in a, in a mean or, or hateful spirit. She does so with a gentle and meek spirit. 
And we don't have to argue about it. Because it's in our home, it's not about who can win. At least I pray it's not. Maybe sometimes it is when my flesh gets in the way. But that ought not be the case. You see, for marriage to win, the wife must lose herself in obedience to the Lord and His commands by following the clear teaching of the Word of God in all matters of submission to her husband. And I'm grateful that my, for my wife. Uh, she's perhaps the most godly woman I know. She's devoted her life to the Lord. She has literally lost herself to encourage me. I owe a great debt to my wife. And I'm not just saying these things because she's sitting right here. This is the truth. And I thank God that my sons have such a woman as their mother that they can look to. When they get married, they're gonna, their wives are going to have some big shoes to fill. You know. But I want to I want to share just two simple lessons tonight that uh, I believe will help the wives and mothers in our church, and truly will help all of us. Notice the first example. Would you please write this down? That we are to follow the example of Christ. Just plain and simple, we are to follow the example of Christ. Look there again in chapter three and verse two. I'm sorry, verse one of Second Peter. It says, "Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the uh, obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of their wives." Uh, the word "likewise" again points back to what Jesus has done. And uh, Jesus is our example. Now, we look back and we see even in chapter 2 and verse 23 that that statement that I had you mark a moment ago. Who uh, says, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. And in verse 21, leaving us an example that he should follow in his steps. We, we find this example of Jesus Christ. Now, oftentimes we, we cringe when we hear the word submission. Don't we? Don't we? I don't know. How dare you say that? Pastor, don't you understand that it's 2021? Everyone is created equal. I never said that we weren't created equal. You're putting words in my mouth. Because remember, we're following the example of Christ. Now, hold your place here in 1 Timothy and turn back, please, to the book of Colossians. Is Jesus any less than God? Jesus is God the Son, the Son of God. Jesus is 100% God, He's co equal. Coexistent, he's eternally existent with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. He's no less God. As a matter of fact, the Word of God says in, uh, in chapter number two, in verse number nine, it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Friends, Jesus Christ is the God of the Bible. And the God of the Bible has given us an example to follow. He, again, He's no less than God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Yet He willingly submitted Himself to the authority of God the Father. What an example. Men, you look at your beautiful wife and you, you understand that, that you are no better than she is. Every one of us in here tonight are equal. Turn with me, if you would, please, holding your place in the book of 1 Peter, and turn back to the book of Genesis. I told you we'd go there eventually. In Genesis chapter number 2, the Bible says in verse 21 of Genesis chapter 2, "...and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam." And he slept. And notice verse 21, it says, And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Uh, I've heard a preacher make this statement, or I read it somewhere, that this goes to prove the equality that God, uh, that, that Adam and Eve had. 
in the sense that, that God did not take uh, a bone out of Adam's foot or out of his leg uh, and create the woman. So uh, it, was not, it was not something that was looked down upon, and nor did He take something from His head uh, of, of which that she could lord over Him with, but from His side. And there's a great equality. The, in other words, we're, we're the same. We, we look here tonight and we understand that, there, that we're not devaluing uh, the ladies, or that we're not degrading women. God created them and He created them well. And uh, as a matter of fact, the first thing they, uh, Adam said when he saw the woman, he said this in verse 23 of Genesis 2, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. He made this great declaration of, of his love and adoration and appreciation for his wife, Eve. And as we look back, though, in, in, in 1 Peter in chapter number 3, we find here the, the direct command that God gives. And the command is to be uh, in subjection. This was done, as again, considering Christ, this was done not because Christ was less than God, but rather to accomplish God's purpose of salvation. That's why He submitted to the authority of God. And ladies, we must recognize the fact that God has a purpose for your home. Doesn't God have a, a He's an astonishing purpose for our homes? And it, a failure, a failure uh, to be submissive to the husband puts in jeopardy that uh, that purpose for your home. And what happens is we miss out on God's blessing. We miss out. On, uh, on, the, on the direction of the home that God establishes. The leadership, the, the, the precedent that God implements in the home, we lose that. Remember, the, the wife's submission to her husband is to accomplish God's design for the home. Now, the submission is not based on the husband's spirituality. Men, Y'all know we could be more spiritual. There's no doubt about it. Wives, your submission to your husbands is not based upon their spirituality. It does not involve them. It involves you and the Lord. And Peter is referring to a wife trying to, to win her husband to Christ. Look there again. In verse 1 of 1 Peter chapter 3, he says, if, uh, that if any obey not the word, that they also may without the word be won by the conversation of their wives. Most often we hear about the way husbands ought to treat his wife, but Peter deals with how Christian wives should respond here to a non-Christian husband. You see, as we've mentioned, the word subjection has nothing to do with inferiority, but everything to do with the order and function of the home. Wives, if you want your husbands to truly lead your home, you must make yourself subject to him. It's a conscious decision. You must willingly, willfully place yourself under his authority. How can a wife place herself in subjection to her husband? Well, it takes the work of the Lord in their life. You turn with me to the book of Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians chapter number 5, please. Ephesians chapter number 5. In verse number 18... The Word of God speaks of His Holy Spirit and our need for the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Bible says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but notice the command. Mark this command, but be filled with the Spirit. To mark that in your Bibles, that's a command for you and for me. 
not just for the wife, not just for the husband. Christian, if, the, if your home is going to work, it has to be a work of God. Because there will be times, more often than not, that you just don't feel like it. Right? I don't want to do that. I want to do it my way. I don't want to respond how the Lord wants me to respond. I want to do it my way. I'm not going to let that go. We're going to keep hashing it out. Until one of us gives in, and it ain't going to be me. Right? Friends, a spiritual, a spirit-filled home should be characterized by the things we find in Ephesians chapter 5 in verses 19 and 20. Look there what it says in verse 19. It says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So according to the Word of God, we need, there ought to be, a great spirit of the Lord in our homes. Uh, joyfulness, thanksgiving, psalms and hymns, melody, a, a place of love and joy and peace. However, husbands, you can't be the husband and father you should be without the Holy Spirit of God in your life. Without walking in the Spirit, without being filled with the Spirit. Likewise, ye wives... You cannot be the wife or mother. You should be unless you're filled with the Spirit of God. There's a great need here. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So in, in our lives, and this is for every one of us, either we are going to allow the Lord to lead our lives as we yield to His presence in our life each day, as we spend time in His Word, as we spend time in prayer, as we as we eradicate the, the influences of our lives that would seek to draw us away from the Lord, or we're going to live according to some other influence. And may I say, anything less than God's influence is wrong. According to Ephesians 19 and 20, our home, or 5, 19 and 20, our home should be characterized by joyfulness, singing, praising God, and giving thanks. And then, the Lord again addresses this truth, this principle. It's not an idea, okay? It's a truth. It's a biblical principle. In other words, it ought not be up for debate. And then he goes on in verse number 21, he says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. In verse 22, the Bible says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. We have this idea that marriage is a 50-50 partnership, right? How many of you have heard that? I've done counseling with, with couples and uh, you know, we talk about these issues. And, and so you, have you ever heard the statement that marriage is 50-50? Like, oh yeah, marriage is 50-50. I said, it's, it's wrong. Like, what? It's not right. Marriage is not 50-50. Everybody, both the husband and the wife, must invest 100%. If it's going to work, it's going to take all of your effort. Regardless, friends, you must give all of your effort even if your spouse isn't. Even if you think your spouse won't. You have to give 100% effort regardless to your marriage. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You see, one of the greatest secrets to happiness in marriage is self-sacrificing, not self-serving. Our world, 
wants us to think, to believe, and to behave as if the world revolves around us. And unfortunately, we've brought a great spirit of selfishness into our homes. Home isn't about me. It's about the Lord. And it's about how I can best honor the Lord. What did Jesus say about being the greatest? If we're going to be the greatest in God's kingdom, what do you have to become? A servant. You see, the the best kept secret is self-sacrifice. Not self-serving. But in our flesh, we want our spouses to, to cater to our every whim and our every need. But that's just going to frustrate. It's just going to bring defeat and discouragement to the home. See, God has established a relationship. And the Bible says in verse number 21 of Ephesians 5, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. This relationship has God at the center. Whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And again, women are not inferior by any means, in no way, to a man. That is why he gives us verse number 21. In Ephesians chapter 5. But God has established a relationship of authority in the home that has nothing to do with the inferiority of a, of, of a woman concerning man, but it has everything to do with God's design for order and function. So there must be submission and authority so things can operate properly. Look what the Bible says in verse 22 of Ephesians 5. It says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband uh, as unto the Lord, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And friends, we cannot love our wives to the same degree that God loves the church. We have established that this morning. But we can love them the same way. He he said He would never leave us or forsake us. And every wife should have the privilege of being married to a husband who loves her like Christ loved the church. And when a man loves a woman as the Lord loves the church, that woman will have no trouble submitting herself to that man. Wives, it is your God-given assignment to be in submission to your husband the assignment. Notice the second truth that we find here this evening. So we turn back to 1 Peter chapter number 3. We find the need to seek after true beauty. Look at what the Word of God says in 1 Peter chapter 3 beginning in verse number 2. It says, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God great price. Now, I do not believe that God has a problem with ladies trying to look nice. Right? But that's not the overwhelming goal. I want my wife to feel as beautiful as she is. I believe that's right. However, we live in such a lewd society. And many people are trying to display as much flesh as possible. Ladies, 
I'm just going to be blunt here tonight. There is not an honest man among us who enjoys being married to a wife he cannot trust. And one who dresses in such a way as to attract the attention of other men. Just keep that in mind. But ladies, do you want to be beautiful? Absolutely, you know. While physical beauty fades, the Lord says there is a type of beauty that comes from the inside and does not corrupt. Look, look there, uh, again in verse number 4, it says, Let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, great price. Hold your place here, and won't you turn with me to the book of Psalms. In Psalm number 90, we come and we find some great life lessons the Lord gives to us. And of course, Psalm 90 is a very popular uh, or well-known chapter of, of the Bible concerning life. As a matter of fact, he, the Lord here... Uh, gives the timeline of a life. In a sense, the length of our days. In verse 10, it says the days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. We, we understand that, that there's a great pattern for life. But notice the final verse of this particular psalm. In Psalm number 90, in verse 17, the Bible says, And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. You know, that's the beauty we seek. Not the beauty of man, not the beauty of this world, but the beauty of the Lord. I would rather have the beauty of God than what the world deems to be beautiful. The world has strange taste, doesn't it? I mean, have you ever seen a pinto or a pacer? When was that ever a good idea, right? You know, fashion trends, you know. I do not like looking at childhood pictures from the 80s, you know. When was that ever right, you know? Little baggy parachute pants, you know. It's just craziness. All those psychedelic colors and just weird, you know, hairstyles, you know, I never have to worry about weird hairstyles, my, my hairstyle never goes out of style, right, because I don't have one, but it's the Lord that has true beauty. And the Bible says, and let the beauty of our Lord be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. I want God to establish the work, don't you? I want God to work in my life in such a way that, that He receives glory and honor and praise. And as we look back in 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 4 it says, But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of meek, of a meek and quiet spirit. You see, we look here and we find that, that God is he's seeking to accomplish something. What is, what is it that God is seeking to accomplish here? Would you write this phrase down? This is the purpose of the home. To reach the home for Christ. That's it. Reach the home for Christ. And we're, and we're so often tempted to complain about our spouses, even in the presence of other people. However, the constant complaining and nagging will never win your spouse to Christ. Christ. And it will never win your spouse to your way of thinking. Reaching your family takes Christ. But let the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. 
Meekness does not mean weakness. Meekness has to do with, uh, with having our strength, energy, and power and potential yielded to Christ. God says a woman should strive for a meek and quiet spirit. I don't want my wife to be some wallflower. But a wife who wins is a woman who yields to God's admonition. Wife, do you want to win? You may ask yourself, well, what am I going to win? A, a battle? Am I going to win an argument? You can win your husband to Christ if he's not already a Christian. And if he is a Christian, you can encourage him to live for the Lord. You can be used of God to bring true happiness to your home. You can be there as an encouragement to your husband. My wife is meek, gentle, and quiet. But she's also strong and, device, and, and uh, decisive. She has made me so dependent upon her that I cannot live without her. She has won the heart of her husband through submitting to him. Some woman would rather win an argument or a fight than to have peace in the home. They want to win every argument. And if this, if this is the way you live, your house is very unhappy. And it's certainly not a home. And if this is the way we live, then we are not setting the example for our children that they ought to have. Your daughters will grow up to do the exact same thing And they'll never, their homes, their families will never reach the potential that God has for them. Look there again in 1 Peter chapter 3. It says, But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. That's where the true beauty lies. Ladies, we must follow the example of Christ. And we must seek true beauty. If our homes will receive help, if they'll be what God wants them to be, then we must place ourselves in subjection to the authority that God has set in place. There's never two heads of state. There's always one. And according to the Word of God, the husband is the head of the home. We must make these decisions. Otherwise, our homes will never be more than a place of constant nagging, bickering, bitterness, strife, contempt, frustration, and on and on the adjectives go. But a home is God-made. Except, a man, except, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. What I want to encourage you to do tonight, and this is perhaps one of the greatest struggles, is to take your hands off. 
but I like to control it. I like to feel like I can steer it and maneuver it and manipulate it in the direction that I choose. Well, that's not God's intention at all. We follow the Lord. But what if... I don't even entertain what ifs. Because God says what's what. And that's the pattern. That's the divine design that God has given. And it may not be politically correct for 2021. But I believe with all of my heart that that is biblically correct. And I'd rather be biblically correct than politically correct any day of the week. May the Lord help us. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed.